Tick tock, it's time to rock. It's the continuing saga on the never ending <laughs> list of who is the greatest blues guitar players. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't do anything ladies and gentlemen on this topic if we don't have the rock professor uh striking his beard on the subject <laughs> if i had a beard i'd stroke it <laughs> as it is with an overnight stubble it's not really the same thing is it <laughs> no. good to see you <laughs> how you doing how's your week you're not bad. Um, looking forward to another week. You know, time is flying by. We're into April, and that gets us into these seasonal things that uh, happens to the channel twice a year, Simon. When we we go an hour somewhere for some people, and we go back an hour uh, somewhere for some people. So this will be the last show that we do this time. If you guys aren't on daylight saving where you are next week we're going to be we're going to be an hour earlier um to take into account this big globe called the earth simon <laughs> yes who in, who invented daylight savings time early or not date i mean honestly but uh yeah we uh, we went uh we went forward last weekend so uh it's uh, eight o'clock. That's a uh, see. I woke up naturally at five past seven this morning. And so wow. like, no alarm clocks, no anything. Like, wow, look at that! Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought to myself that Mr. Walton is going to stop that immediately and make me have an alarm clock. He get up. <laughs> well, I, again, folks, if you don't realise this, obviously this channel here is about love of the music and getting together <laughs> and. Um, hanging out with our community and you know uh it's the sacrifices you know that we make for for the music and for the topic and we always appreciate that we never take that for granted do we simon so thank you simon nope. for 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 getting out of bed and uh, contributing to the show because the show wouldn't be the same without the rock professor and we've got some <laughs> awesome people here in the chat and the rock professor is going to be doing a shout oh, out to you we can't yes if you're watching give you brad cook because brad is in tasmania right as we speak as he playing he's on stage even as we speak and uh he's uh he's not going live from on stage while he's uh while he's playing which i think is slack myself you know <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll tell you the reason why he's not keen to do that, and I've tried it before. It's because no, 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 he shouldn't do... be doing that. He's like got he's got better things to do. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> oh, uh, is is because he plays covers in the band, and everything gets mm. copyrighted and gets blocked. So yeah, yeah. no, no, it's just, uh, uh, so that's it's, one of the I'm reasons I'm why. Joking. I don't expect him oh. to be going live while he's got to focus on playing. <laughs> I just, I just want the excuse to. Tease him while he's not here, you know. Oh, okay. old oh yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we, 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 we're always under keen and to and what he deserves. What he yeah. deserves, the back door man. Yeah. Where is he? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, a, as usual, folks, if you're watching on replay, um, we do really appreciate the fact that you could give us a subscription. Our subscription base obviously is climbing, and we appreciate that um we we think that uh the support you guys give us is brilliant and fantastic simon as you know and uh yeah. we, we we subscribe to every channel and again if you're not on our channels page uh, all our friends are there jim is there arvin is there um uh, great great vanzini is there the rock professor yeah. is there so if you're not on our channels page please uh, let one of us know and I'll make sure that your channel is up there because uh, we like to do that. And in fact, what I'm going to do in the next couple of weeks is I'm going to do part four of my favorite uh, YouTube channels and the uh, oh, YouTube nice, channels yeah. that I'm going to go through will be all the YouTube channels of our friends, Simon. So we're going to go through That's... and do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we should say that uh, 
If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the Great Vanzini's channel. He's on 975 subscribers. Let's get him to a thousand. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gonna, yeah. That, that would be really good. He can we've retire done on the millions that he's going to get. <laughs> we've, we've done that a few times on our channel. We're um, we, we've helped a few yeah. channels. Uh, Doug, Doug, Doug Steele from yeah. America, so, or the American based in Aussie, we helped him get over 20K, didn't we? Um, Mike yeah. Mumia, the blues dude, he was the last guy that we helped get over 1,000 subscribers. That was me. I was his 1,000th subscriber. Yeah. yeah. I've not earned it, not earned it, I've subscribed. That made me his 1K. You can send me the check later. <laughs> and Mark? And Mark is going to join us live. We've been trying to get Mark on the channel um, cool. for a long time, but it's a busy time of year for Mark because he's uh, self-employed and he's in the sign business. So right. um, that's Signage. that's that's uh, uh, keeping him busy. But um, uh -huh. certainly um, go and check out Mark Mumia. Um, he's a fantastic guy based in um, the States. Plays a lot of that early Chicago blues stuff. Loves it, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. We've got 10 people yeah. in here. You can do a shout out. I can, I can do a shout out. Yes, look, we've got uh, good. We've got the great Vanzini in the chat. Morning, great Vanzini. Hope you're well. Uh, we've got Phil Byers. Morning, Phil. G'day, we've Phil. Got Arvin Gaunt as well. Morning, Arvin. Hope you're good too. Good, great to good see you. Bro. Boomster Black. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> Jazz Thunder 50, Jim. Morning, Jim. Hey, Jimmy. North of the border. Hope you're good. And uh, Gret Zeppelin, as ever. Good morning, Gret. Hope you're good. So, uh, so everyone, I think, has made a comment. So, big, <laughs> big dimes coming your way, Great Banzini. <laughs> getting to a thousand is not easy. Lock out the sun. No, it's not easy. No. Very hard. But, uh, but fantastic. And let's, uh, let's hope you get there soon. It to be really nice. Yeah. 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 It's not easy. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were lucky. We were fortunate. We had a couple of shows that went viral and well, and, and in our, in our opinion went viral, didn't they, Simon, you know, and they bought a lot of subscribers, you know, those, uh, Led Zeppelin shows we did. Yeah. Over more than 15,000 views and they, whatever they, they got, they had a lot, didn't they? Yeah. Which was very nice. Always nice. <laughs> and also, um, a big part of our channel, guys, um, if you're regulars and, and all of you in the chat are, um, a big part of our channel is the topic of Van Halen. And um, uh, yes. we did, our, uh, did a Van Halen show yesterday on the channel. We had uh, Jimmy and John, Tanner and Les Paul in, and Simon, the rock professor, was in the chat at the start, and it's always a great time with those guys, Simon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they're always in uh, fun. It was good fun. There was lots of uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, light-hearted stuff as well, and uh, but some great and some great info and uh, some great insights as well. It was a uh, it was a good show. I've, uh, I've watched it all, and uh, appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, well, you know, I have a lot. I have my use kind of YouTube. Is it? Almost like a radio, you know, in the past, you might have had the radio on in the background, you know, doing. Yeah. Well, I have, I just put YouTube on, you know. Me too. You don't need to watch, I don't need to, I've seen your face a few times before. Sure. So I don't really need to watch it. What I need to is listen to it. So while I'm doing yep. stuff like, you know, yesterday I was, I don't know. Oh, I went out, yes, I went and uh, I went jamming with a couple of friends of mine yesterday. I, uh, I met up with some people I'd uh, met on guitar breaks, my guitar breaks while I was there in Italy. Uh, they were staying close by, so I went over and uh, and had an afternoon of jamming. Took my amp and my guitars out for a trip. It was great, fantastic, <clears throat> brilliant, really nice. So shout out to Moira and uh, and to uh, Angela. Fantastic, thank you guys for for uh, having a great afternoon of uh, playing some songs and uh, messing about. Yeah, so. Keep keep an eye on the channel if you are um, interested in all things Van Halen. We're um, certainly going to offer um, some news and opinions and views coming up uh, with uh, the Alex Van Halen book that's set for release later on in the year. 
we're always in contact with Chris Gill, and Chris Gill is going to jump on and do a show with us soon to talk about a few things that Chris Gill is uh, doing. And we invite you to go and get the latest issue of uh, Guitar World magazine, Simon, that has Eddie Van Halen on the cover, and they talk about three or four albums that came out in 1984, including Van Halen's 1984. And Chris Gill uh, writes the article and mentions in his article another very good friend of ours, Alan Garber. Yes, the real, the real, the real professor, <laughs> not the masquerading one. A <laughs> um, couple of things that happened on the the uh, uh, news over the week, folks. So obviously, the, the the first thing is uh, early in the week. Uh, this gentleman here, who's been a, another big yeah. part of our channel since we created it, Simon, and jumped on and started doing all things British Electric Blues was uh, uh, the birthday of Gary Moore um, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Good mo Derek, good morning. Derek Clatt's in the chat. So he's so got man flu, bad. Oh, so shit. Get, well, get well soon, mate. It's, uh, thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, hope you feel better soon. That's bad. Hopefully we can alleviate some of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we invite you, if you haven't already looked on our channel, we've got um, quite a few rankings of the tracks dedicated to Gary Moore and a couple of other shows as well talking about him and uh, sharing our, our, our love of his music and also, again, Simon, that great legacy he followed and that legacy he's left behind for us. Yeah. 72. He would have been 72. That is still chicken. out there doing it. Spring chicken. I know. Compared to uh, compared to uh, this summer, you can go and see Bob Dylan, who's 84, 83, uh, touring with Willie Nelson, who's 90. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Right. Un Could I say? Could I say? Yeah, uh, that's. If you're still doing it 90, hats off to you, whatever you're um, doing. Oh, and that's tremendous, isn't it? And apparently he grows pretty good marijuana. Yeah, but he's not the oldest. He, there's, a guy, there's a guy who plays, I think, with Pharaoh Saunders, right? You know, the great jazz saxophonist, Pharaoh Saunders, who's 98 and still touring. Really? I mean, come on. <laughs> that's amazing. Wow. That's uh, well done, them. If we all get to ninety-eight and we're still out there doing it, you'd be you'd be happy, wouldn't you? Sit me down, put a guitar in my hand, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hold on, I'm just going to change the subject a little bit. I'm just going to put another light on to see if it see if I can just do some experimenting while we're just hanging around Ooh. talking. <laughs> okay. Extra. Oh, we're well, going to look at that. Yeah, that's better. Technicolor, Technicolor Walton. I, 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 and you didn't even have to pay folks to change the lights on this channel. <laughs> Don't start that for goodness sake. <laughs> that, that, they, uh, they just this... happen naturally. Um, another bit of news, <laughs> folks, that I jumped on, and again, um, I have to uh, do a shout out to Carl. Um, a very good friend of ours. Oh, who, originator of the channel. Mm, he sent me a message and said, look, have you seen this photo? And I um, saw the post and went to our Facebook page and saw yeah. it. And along with a couple of other people kind of thought, mate, because we hadn't seen this photo before, so we kind of thought maybe it was AI. But then after um, um, sending a couple of messages to people I know who said, no, this is real, we jumped on it and we did a bit of a video for the channel. So here's a photograph here of Peter Green uh, yeah. and uh, Eric Clapton taken in June 1966. Amazing, aren't they? Look at those suits, sharp. And what was Clapton doing in June 1966, Simon? I don't know. What he was he in? Was he doing the Beano? Was he doing? Yeah. Is that John Mayall? Yeah, type. Yeah. 
interesting though that 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 are kind of in sort of mod mode aren't they that kind of sharp suits kind of smart kind of thing pre pre the kind of pre the hippie explosion you know pre the more casual thing great photo yeah great photo i i i haven't seen anything this early um from them um but yeah fantastic and it kind of gives hope simon as we said in our video for making the picture here on the channel you know it's great to see these photos come out and be released yeah, and yeah. uh you know what else is on people's films in their front room simon that they took or their grandparents took or their parents took 50 odd years ago mm, yeah 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 it's a uh... Well, yeah. Even then, people had cameras, and they, you know, took uh, took shots of the stuff. It's uh, be amazing to see uh, see what else comes out. You know, people on their eye, eight millimeter films as well. No, that's quite a lot of people had eight millimeter film stuff doing then, which is quite something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So that great, great find, great find, and um, n I, I, I don't know, I. I I don't know, so I can't give any credit to the photographer or the person responsible for releasing this photo. I, I've I've tried researching <laughs> it, Simon. I've been on half a dozen Facebook groups. Peter Green, mm -hmm. no, no one, no one can identify who no took the photo oh, or or who post, posted it first. So if you know who that person is, or if indeed you are that person, let us know so that we can attach your your credentials to this video yeah yeah yes uh, yes just a uh, oven mine uh, mine have this uh, copper things in them so they don't very good for guitar playing either they stick on the neck it's quite funny i take one off to play <laughs> sorry we're having old man's chat in the uh, in the chat Mr. Walton, right? Awesome gloves. I'll help your, uh, I'll help your arthritic old hands. <laughs> mm. I mean, we should be talking about high fashion. We're talking about arthritis gloves. <laughs> oh dear, Rag, yeah. dragged into the terrible things. Anyway, yes. Sorry, I'm just joining with that. <laughs> Oh, um, and some other news other news on on the channel um we we got got some good views simon on um yeah lots of good views yeah on the the show that we did um taj mahal sitting at just over 122 the yeah. midweek shout that we did out with uh or and for um, Eric Clapton's on three hundred and eighty, so you know, good yeah. numbers, good numbers for our channel. We're always happy, always happy to have at least if anyone yeah. just just one person <laughs> watches one show, Simon. Well, you know, in terms of the Taj Mahal show, clearly that's a you know it's a niche album, is it? <laughs> you know, not not a massive seller, but it's a great album. And if and, what, and there are a couple of comments there that you know that please about people who would you know who listen to it and kind of thing and. Uh, you know, and that cheers me up no end. You know, if I get one or two people who go, oh, I missed that, it was really good, you know, then I I feel kind of chuffed that it's more than a, more than, you know, in a way more than, you know, I think that's what our channel's about. I think that's what we try and do, you know, and, uh, you know, if you, you know, think, oh, what are those, are, what are they talking about? Who's that Taj Mahal bloke? You know, and they go off and they listen to it and realize it's a great album, really you know, well recorded and a you know fantastic kind of uh, evolution of the blues in the in the sixties. That uh, you know, that if you get something out of it like that, and I'm you know I'm really happy that uh, that that people have got that. You know, really chuffed, really chuffed that people do that. So uh, you know, so, uh, for me, it's never been all about the views. You know, it's nice to get you know a lot of views, Led Zeppelin ones. You know, fifteen thousand views, whatever it is. But it's really great to get those. But you know, I think. You know, ranking the tracks on things like Tyson Hall is our bread and butter, what we do here, you know, as I say, a few people get, go away and listen to the album and, uh, you know, then uh, I feel good about that.
That's good, really. You've got 200, 232 views on the Van Halen uh, show already, which is pretty good. Excellent. Yeah, we've got, uh, got 4,000 views on the Philip Sace interview and things, which is brilliant. 300 views on the on the Fleetwood Mac thing, so we're doing fine. I feel like awesome. it's going fine. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you're on Instagram, you need to go and find us there on Instagram. <laughs> if you want to see what Brad's doing, especially, he's very active on Instagram. Um, he's got a couple of posts there from his gig um, that he's um, that he's doing. So go and check. Inst Instagram are a little bit different with uh, copyright. They allow you to kind of play music over there on Instagram. Something that we've yeah. been thinking about doing a little bit more on, maybe doing some shows on, on Instagram. We used to do a couple of those um, early shows on the 5150 uh, topic, Simon. You might remember when Kurt was part I of do, the channel. Yeah. 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 Oh, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes, if they're a bit, uh, if they're a bit, uh, a bit more free with the, without copywriting us out of his existence kind of thing. I mean, I you know, I think it's sad that we couldn't play some of, for instance, that Taj Mahal record. You know, you know, to give people a chance to actually hear it and uh, you know hear what it's like and things it would have been cool, wouldn't it? But you can't risk it, you know, because that's clearly bringing it to a wider audience, isn't it? Some educational purposes in that for sure. That I feel a bit, you know, I mean, clearly everyone's heard the Led Zeppelin record, so it's not really the same thing. But but you know, people haven't heard the the Taj Mahal record, and I think to be able to play it. Would be uh would be uh would be great, you know. Morning, Greg. Robert's tune. How you doing? Hope you're good. What's yeah. You well, that makes it difficult, obviously. And I remember early on when we were doing this gig, folks. I remember Carl's sister and brother-in-law were watching the Rock Professor and Carl and I, and we were doing a Stones album. And they said they thought they were being geniuses. They thought they were being they were giving us a really really cool tip, Simon. They said. They said to Carl, he said, why don't you guys just play like a minute of each song, oh, you know, good. instead of s sitting there talking about them, you know, play a bit of the song so that we can, and, you know, and that, that's when Carl said, well, yeah, you can, but you can't, if you know what I mean. Great Vanzini will know this too. Um, and, you know, the Rock Professor and I, we've spoken about it lots of times. You, you just don't know because you could do a show playing it and they'll take any monetization that you make, which is fine, <laughs> or or they can block you. So so if you do a really, really good show, if the Rock Professor and I, you know, and every show we do is a really, really good show, but, <laughs> it, it, you, you know, well, if, if we do a really, really good show um, and there's some music on there and they block it, that means that we can't show that whole show unless we go and cut it and edit it. And we've had to do that a couple of times, um, yeah. get the music edited out. And yeah, yeah, it's just, and, and look, it's a pain in the ass. And so we just have decided on the channel, we just don't do it. No, until somebody realizes that actually it's to the benefit of musicians, not to the detriment of them. We're not trying to steal their money, not trying to run away with stuff. You don't mind if it's, we don't mind if the money goes to them. That's fine. What we don't want to be is see, blocked. To, yeah, see what? So he's been totally blocked for doing a snippet of a, yeah, exactly. So your plane landing, there we are. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that's clearly desperately running off of their money, Great Manzini. I, I yeah. think it's idiotic, really, you know, that uh, you can, I, I don't know how, I mean, I presume, I mean, I've heard of various channels you could do kind of various deals. I don't know, I don't know how you'd ever start that, but uh, they've done, done deals on things, haven't they? Kind of ways of being able to play things without getting copyright striked. Strike, struck. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it's done. It hasn't been offered to us. Um, but no. there again, you know, bear in mind that uh, YouTube is not the same for everybody. Do not do no. not believe that your 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 one thousand subscriber or ten thousand subscriber channel is being operated the same way as Rick Beato's. No, sadly not. 
unfortunately. It's a hierarchy, as always. And that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, you just got to realise it, didn't you? When half of the battle yeah. is, is realised. Not to, yeah. Not to anything else. See, the rock professor, he, he, he's just giving you, you, you... And the sooner you know that, if you're a YouTuber, the better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So you realise it's true, yeah. Anyway, shall we? Uh, shall we get on to the uh, the matter in hand? Oh, no, no, not yet. No, not yet. No, oh, okay. not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I want to share a bit of a gripe with you oh, guys. Good. And, okay, and, good. And we've got some friends here in the channel, so the gripe isn't going to go over everyone's head. And great Vanzini reviews a lot of guitars so he's going to be in the he's going to be in the front seat of this conversation simon you and i have said it many many times on the channel none of us are, are gear snobs i am not a gear snob i appreciate <laughs> epiphone guitars i've got epiphone guitars you know uh, my es335 is an epiphone um i've yeah, got yeah. a casino I've got an Epi Epiphone Sheraton. Um, I've got an Epiphone uh, Firebird. I've got an Epiphone um, Hummingbird. Yeah. Here's my, here's my 200 pounds Chapman guitar, uh, which uh, goes to every gig I play. My second guitar. Absolutely. No, I, gold. I, 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 but for the life of me, I can't understand why Epiphone now are pumping out these really nice guitars. And I've seen a lot of videos over the last couple of days. Most of us probably have, if we're mm -hmm. gear-orientated folks. But Simon, you know, a 59 Epiphone for two and a half or two, eight, just under 3K New Zealand dollars. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Care, I don't care how 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 Gibsony the headstock is, Simon. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Yeah, I, I I can't understand where Epiphone are going with that, because that's not putting it in entry level or the budget market or you know the good value market, you know because Epiphone's always had good value guitars, Simon. Now all of a sudden. You know, it's it's half the price of a Gibson Les Paul, Simon. Well, don't you think that's part of it? I mean, interestingly, an Epiphone 59 Les Paul here, um, Anderton's, is uh, £749. So that's about $1,500 for you, something like that. $1,600. No. Is it $2, no. $2 New Zealand dollars for the paint? Was it more than that? No. no. No, you got shipping on that, so you're looking at uh, okay, two yeah, eight. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, and that's your problem, isn't it? Is that is that is that is that if it was if it was sixteen hundred dollars? Yes, that's that a bit different. Right. Yeah. Yes. So you know, I would say that you know, if I buy this from Amazon, you know, Epiphone Fifty Nine Les Paul Standard in Age Dark Burst. Seven hundred and forty-nine pounds. You know, to my door, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, you know, whereas you are paying, you know, three times that. Basically, aren't you? So what you're saying, you're, you're paying more like, well, three thousand dollars, more like fifteen hundred pounds. That's twice that. Now, as you so rightly say, if you're paying fifteen hundred pounds, and a real Les Paul is two and a half you might think differently about it but so i think it's i mean your problem is you've got those that in that uh transportation and import stuff haven't you that you have to pay oh on yeah top. and I, again i don't have a problem with people it. making money um if arvin's still in the chat somewhere arvin's got a couple arvin's got the 61 uh gibson uh sorry epiphone sg i pick one up um and i, I mm -hmm. you, you're right that that 1600 simon is fantastic it came with a case a hard yeah, case yeah. 
Um, uh, over there in that corner there, um, the Firebird, 1400 New Zealand. And now all of a sudden you're going to be paying twice that price because... It... As I say, the interesting part is that they're made in China, yes? Is that right? Are they made in Correct. China? I think they are made in China. So if they shipped it from China direct to New Zealand, which, well, I don't know whether which they do what they not. do. This is what they do. How come it's so expensive? And how come that cost is not is not put on? Because you're closer to China than the US is. Yep. There's a bulk thing going, probably going on. But, but, but my point is that if it costs three times as much to ship it to the US as it costs to ship it to you due to distance, then how come they're so cheap in America and so expensive in New Zealand? Doesn't make sense, does it? You know, from a from a distance point of view, weird. Yeah, um, so so I've watched a couple of videos over the last couple of days, and I look, I don't know, and there's some guys out there saying, look, this is good. A lot of guys out there saying, oh, this could backfire. You know, this 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 could backfire. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I've got to tell you, though, Simon, that uh, ES-335 um, that I had a look at, that Epiphone one with the Gibson, it, it does look nice. It looks like a nice guitar, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and for a yeah. guy that's thinking that that's going to be seven seven k here, and if you pick that up for just under three, is that a good is that good value? Oh. It, it doesn't it doesn't feel like you know if you're paying 700 pounds 750 pounds whatever is uh yeah is you know that feels like sort of you know in the budget area doesn't it it feels like that's what epiphone are to gibson a bit like squire art offender you know the, the cheaper end of it good guitars fantastic guitars you know but uh but uh you know that's where their uh market uh, their price point is in that you know and and it clearly, it makes sense, you know, for Gibson to have guitars in, as we see, the Fender model is the classic one here, where you can buy a Fender by, by a Squire from, you know, for, I don't know, hundred pounds on up, you know, to, you know, to the classic vibes, to the, you know, Mexican ones, to the US ones, to the custom shop ones. And they have a, they have a guitar at every, every price point, don't they? You know, to suit every budget kind of thing, which is very smart, you know, and, but, you know, it, you're right. If in New Zealand, Epiphone is not a is not a budget brand anymore. What you're saying is that in New Zealand, I presume in Australia as well, they're not budget brands. Actually, they're kind of premium brands. That's a different yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, 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 exactly. And I think I I, I think that's probably where it's going to go with with Gibson. So. You know, it's uh, in the next five, ten years, Simon. You know, owning an Epiphone is going to be, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. An expensive guitar. Yeah, going to be well, you know, and uh, it kind of uh, yes, they do of, and they do gouge Mr. Walton for shipping in the in the antipodes. Um, it's uh, it's really unfortunate, and I'm gonna. Well, I don't know. Are they, you know, that that somehow, as I say, the shipping to you and whatever it seems to be much more expensive than the shipping to the US. I don't. Be interested to know. Uh, John ZD three five one. Good morning. Hi, John. Hope you're good. Yeah. <laughs> he was asleep in the back seat and remembered that this twaddle was on, so woke up. I'm glad we woke you up, John. Otherwise, you'd have missed a whole chunk of the day. But uh, <laughs> but I yeah it's it's weird that I I mean what interests me is just thinking about it is do you think do you think that Epiphone as it's an American company they don't pay import duties on them to go into America know. see I, there's I there's know. all that I don't know see but uh, but nevertheless I think you know that that if you have great you know great sways of the of the globe where you know your budget brand is not a budget brand actually it's blooming expensive brand. Um, you know, I think that's probably a mistake, really, isn't it? You know, and that seems to be, you know, that this 59 Epiphone has got uh, burst buckers in it, burst bucker two. 
you know, it's got proper Gibson pickups in there, so, you know, definitely worth it, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, it really, where does it leave the budget? What, so, what do you have as budget guitars in, in New Zealand? What, what, what makes do you have? Uh, well, you got Squire, um, you know, but, but yeah. Squires have the classic vibes too, which are a very, very, very good guitar. And we've got John ZD three five one in here too, which will attest to that because he's got a few of them. My Telecaster is a Squire, and I've got a Squire Strat that I've done some upgrades, and that will give my American Strats run for money for its money too. But um, you know, th they've still got some of those, um, you know, earlier issue. Uh, Epiphones, Simon. You know, you can yeah. you can buy a cheap Epiphone um, SG because there's about six or seven different models now. Um, you can buy uh, this cheapest SG is going to cost you six hundred New Zealand dollars. So so you can you know you can go and buy an amp, yeah. reasonably good amp, and a good guitar. You know, if you're a um, Angus Young fan, for less than a thousand bucks, and you're going to sound pretty good, Simon. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I, as I said, I just find it a bit odd that, that you know that you turn your your uh, you turn your budget brand into a luxury brand in some places due to whatever transport costs and whatever. But, uh, whereas... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where where it goes, and we'll be watching this obviously on the channel, and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more because. Um, Arvin's in here, and, and we're we're all fans, and great Van Zini, I'm sure he's reviewed them, and you know I, I I'm a fan of Epiphone guitars. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, because they were affordable and good guitars, and easy to upgrade if you wanted to, Simon. You know, like I say, my Casino, that SG sixty one SG was not bad. My Firebird, fantastic. Um. Um, but to put another another fifteen hundred or eighteen hundred dollars on top of that, Simon. To... Yeah, that's it's a lot, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Kind of prices them out of the market. I don't know how well they do in the. But you see, save, I noticed that save your money Anderton's... and go and buy a Gibson. <laughs> well, yeah, it becomes it becomes more. Maybe that's what they want you to do. I mean, I'm interested in, you know, in, in Anderton's, you know, you can buy an Epiphone Power Players SG electric guitar in ice blue for £269. Fantastic. Which is, uh, which is pretty good value. There was one, uh, I did see one for one ninety nine as well. But, uh, right. So, you know, you, you go and you think to yourself, well, that's, that, that's where I think Epiphone, you know, certainly some of Epiphone are some in of terms them, yeah. of, uh, you know, in terms of their, um, in terms of their price points and you know what they do is uh, yeah yeah so they go from you know as I say to, well 199 pounds and up to 1379 for a Epiphone 63 Les Paul SG Custom with Maestro Vibrola and classic white three pickup job 1379 pounds ooh that's, that's the custom that's the that's yeah, the capstone. Yeah. So that's a top. That's a top of the range. That's pretty good. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, three that's... Gibson custom buckers. Well, yeah. Some, you know, it's got proper Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. But uh, you know, even that is uh, that's probably half the price of a of a Gibson one here. But, uh, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. interesting yeah. Uh, no. It'll be good to see what happens because, like, like I say, the inspired by Gibson range when it came out, again, yeah, yeah, you know, the, 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 like the rock professor said, folks, you know, it was about fifteen, sixteen hundred NZ, and that's still affordable, still, mm. still great. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Arvin's, yeah, good to mod. That's what I did with my. Um, with my uh, Epiphone uh, ES335, I, I just changed the Epiphone pickup, Simon, and put some tone bucker pickups in there. What's some Gibson ones? Are they tone bucks and Gibson? Gibson no, ones? no, 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 just just a good cheapish because I didn't want to put some Gibsons in there, but you know, just a good, <laughs> but a little bit, 
but just a little bit better than the standard Epiphone ones that came with it, you know, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got to notice the difference. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Um, sorry, sorry for 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 changing the subject, but okay. I'd I'd love to I'd love for us to keep an eye, Simon, on where that conversation is going because, you know, playing the guitar is all about getting getting people to play the guitar, and uh, people have to buy. You know, people want to buy good, affordable guitars too when they're beginning, aren't they? Absolutely. You know, kids and stuff. You know, you need to have something. It isn't uh, isn't so expensive that, uh, as you say, you know, you, you'd be hesitant about buying your child a three thousand dollar guitar, wouldn't you? As a kind of you know first guitar mm. kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, mm. but yes, yeah, so modding modding is good. I've only modded one of my guitars, but uh, generally, I I roll with what is, <laughs> you know. The, the weak link in the chain of the guitar and the amp and, and me is me. So, <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to talk about, um, for the next 20 minutes, <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to talk about this list. So I'm just going to refresh you guys. I'm going to throw up the top 10 um, from Total Guitars. Great, awesome, fantastic article that I did a show on a couple of weeks ago here on the channel. And I ask you, please, to go and check out that magazine because they are pretty good. Um, so I'll, I'll go through it, and then we'll get some views on The Rock Professor, and I'll share a couple. And then we'll highlight what the folks are saying in the chat. We're not asking for your top ten, but if you want to give us your top ten, your top three, or your top five, you can go for it. We won't hold anybody accountable because we know that that top <laughs> five or top ten does change, Simon. So... Their number 10 was uh, the great, late, Muddy Waters. Number nine was Robert Johnson, who was one of the greatest influences for so many, 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 many people, Simon. Yeah, well, it, one of the originators, wasn't it? I mean, it, you know, Clapton, Crossroads, all of that is all Robert Johnson, isn't it? At least one of his seminal influences in the Clapton's Robert Johnson. For sure. Um, um, and if you just give me one second, guys, because I think I have made, as usual, I've made a cock up. I've I haven't put number eight. Number eight is Albert King. Albert King, yeah. Is number eight. Number seven, Buddy Guy. That was really interesting. Buddy Guy at number seven. Number six, Rock Professor, is Gary Moore. Number yeah, five, that, Simon. You know, that, Jimmy. That, that's one of that's the first of the interesting ones. You know, Gary Moore, <clears throat> you know, as clearly somebody they, you know, that, that they put in as kind of one of the sort of the, the people who kind of took the blues in the new direction in the in the eighties. Number four is our friend Eric Clapton. Big part of the channel. Oh. Number three. Very, very interesting for a lot of us. I remember this conversation. Joe Bonamassa. Number three, yeah. Number two, Stevie Ray Vaughan. And this was a huge surprise for me too. Number one, D.B. King. Yeah. Although, no, not, not, I mean, it, you, you, you can, you can pin these always, these kind of lists, can't you? But, um, the, but, you know, I think it's fair enough to put BB King. You know, you only need one note to BB King to know it's BB King. It's completely unique. He played for seventy years. You know, he crossed the. You know, he he made the span, didn't he, from the earliest <clears throat> blues right up through the Chicago blues, right into the modern times and making more modern albums with with people. <clears throat> you know, you know, you can't deny his influence, can you? You know, not only playing with the. Yeah, all the other blues people, you know, this film of him playing with, you know, Derek Trucks and all sorts of people, but also playing with U2 on Rattle and Hum and, <clears throat> you know, that kind of crossover thing. I, you know, I think I feel that's pretty fair myself, you know, given his his influence and his uh, longevity across, you know, the history of the blues. Probably, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's, I agree, Booster Platt, you know, 
is Joe Bonamassa worthy of being number three and Eric Clapton worthy of being number four? For instance, you know, I, you know, we talk a lot on this channel about, you know, Sam, you know, Clapton's seminal influence on, you know, British blues rock, you know, the Beano album, you cannot overestimate the, uh, the influence of that record, the influence of the, you know, the Les Paul into the JCM 45 that he used on that and the way he recorded, you know, every, you know, you name your blues guitarist after that and they're all doing that after Eric and they're all, they're all, uh, um, you know, and they're all following him. Uh, Jeff Beck's at number 11. Have we ever asked that question? I missed that. Yeah, great Manzini. I agree with that. So, but, you know, it's a, but, I, but I guess what's going on here is that Joe Bonamassa, you know, he is the leading light of the modern blues era, isn't he? You know, he's produced loads of records for other blues artists, Larry McRae, Joanne Sean Taylor, you name it, he's He's done produced records. I mean, he's done a load of records with Josh Smith recently. You know, he runs the Keeping the Blues Alive cruise. He tours. Well, he just played at the Alba Hall last night and tonight. Is he playing last night and tonight? Last night, the night before. Anyway, two nights in the Royal Alba Hall in in, in in the UK. You know, he's uh, absolutely blasting it. You know, and I can see from a modern influence point of view why he should be in the top ten. Whether he should be before, after Eric, hi there. I don't know about that. I feel if I bones, that's probably not right myself. But uh, I think Eric had greater. But is Eric, is Eric's influence greater than Jimi Hendrix's? You know, for me, because I'm old school, Jimi Hendrix is the greatest guitar player. You know, and that, that what he did, and you know the way he took music, you know, and blues, rock, and things. You know, he took it to places that, that, that nobody else took it, really, and opened it up for people in a way that nobody else did. So, uh, for me, he's the greatest ever, Jimi Hendrix. So, I, you know, I think I, you know, but, I mean, you know, was it, was it, was it, was it, was it Albert King who said that he's not a blues player? Was it one of, one of those older guys, wasn't it? Well, I can't remember Buddy Guy or Albert King. One of those guys said, well, uh, Hendrix, not a blues player. I played with Hendrix, he's not a blues player. <laughs> as a thing but uh i you know for me that that's where i just you know but again so, you, so you've got you've got stevie raven one at two bonamassa at three gary moore at six you've got the you know the <laughs> gary moore's not that you know, but you know the newer generation it's not just you know whoever buddy guy or eric or whoever, people in the 60s it's uh it's um you know it's people who come in later and made it into something else and i think you know there is an argument for people like gary moore to be included and i i think it's a, it's interesting that the list that they've done does have quite a lot of newer people in it doesn't it you know it's kirk fletcher josh smith alongside you know albert collins and stuff although i uh, could i say one tell me if you think this is two i have a glaring admission mr walton Absolutely, to me, a glaring admission of uh, of somebody who's not on the list at all, who I would be putting right in there. Have you, I don't know if you don't know. If, have, have, has it occurred to you at all? Have you, have you? Has any omissions occurred to you at all? You thought, well, he should be on the list of a hundred. Blimey, you know, a man who had his own signature guitar. You know, and uh, mate, you know, there's a beat named after him. No, still no, no. Shave and a haircut, two bits. Bo Diddley, where is Bo Diddley on that list? He's not even on the list. How can you leave out Bo Diddley? I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand how Bo Diddley is not on that list at all. As I say, man, you know, that custom square guitar he had that was his, you know, when he had a beat named after him, shaved and a haircut, two bits, that supposedly oh, yeah, beat. Yeah. You know, yeah, stuff yeah, is yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. not to be on there. Uh, good point. And that's why not, we're, not it's it. one of the reasons why we're talking about it. Uh, yeah. Billy Gibbons yeah. is on the list. He's he is. on the top 100, uh, Boomster Black. Um, uh, if, you, if you if you just give me... <clears throat> 
He's number sixteen, Booster. Yeah. And, and I'll us? attach I'll attach um, <coughs> that article if you uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll attach that as a um, pick on our community page for you to go and have a look at it. But um, yeah, look, you know, uh, as John said, the three five one. It depends on the criteria. We're not giving um, <coughs> guitar total guitar any grief whatsoever because total guitar. As a guitar playing magazine, I said when I went live a couple of weeks ago talking about this, know their stuff. They are a reputable magazine, Simon. They talk regularly about, you know, the blues. And every point that they made in that article was valid and on point. Um, their go-to albums that they suggested you go and have a listen to. But again, you know, f from my point of view, and a lot of other people that made comments on that video... I went through and had a look, Simon, before we went live. There's a lot of people saying Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. There's at least three or four comments there where people are saying Jimmy. Now, I agree with the rock professor. What Jimmy uh, did <coughs> to blues guitar, you know, um, through, through, through that electrical guitar that he had, the double stops, you know, mm -hmm. those basic effects that he had. And then you've got Clapton with the high amp with the turned on turned on 10 with the Les Paul and the Marshall, <laughs> you know, for me, Simon, just because of that and their techniques and what they were doing, that they, they're always going to be in my top three, Simon. No, I, I agree. And, you know, I think that, uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the, the top 10 is a very difficult thing to do. Isn't it? It's a very subjective thing to do. You know, I did a sort of top Great. 10, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it's, you know, do you choose, you know, how do you choose, I don't know, <clears throat> Buddy Guy over Joe Bonamassa? Do you, do you, you know, Albert King, well, do, you, do you choose him over? Well, you don't. You don't. You know, you, well, that's, that's the difficult bit, you know, isn't it? You know, you know over Keith Richards, do you know? How do Love you, you Joe. How do you... Love you, Joe, but you don't. We don't. I don't. <laughs> oh, well, but, but and I agree with what Booster Black. I mean, I think that if you're going to do it from... You know, if it's you know for for a lot of you know kids or whatever, you know the the current king of the blues is Joe Bonamassa. He isn't BB King, and it's not Eric Clapton. You know, there'll be a load of people younger well, than me. Well, I'm surprised. No idea. They, <clears throat> I'm surprised they didn't put John Mayer then, according to your <laughs> logic, rock professor at number two. <laughs> well, <clears throat> don't know if I've got logic, but anyway, <laughs> yes, <clears throat> I I agree. I think that uh, you know that uh, that that that's it. You know, but but you know, I think that you know, from in my own, you know, and I think don't you think that's why Stevie Ray Vaughan is on that list as well? Because you know, he's because of that uh, because of that later influence, really. You know what he did. You know, because blues when he when he started, you know, in the eighties when he was doing Texas Southern. You know, he was kind of in the doldrums blues, wasn't it? It wasn't really a thing at all. It certainly wasn't here much. Well, you know, know, sort of gone you know, on and he, we, we and love he dragged Stevie. it back in. Yeah, well, we he love. dragged it back in. You know, no one more influential on, you know, Bonamassa and, you know, him and Gary Moore, I think, you know, are the two seminal new, uh, yeah, Booster Black. See, but John Mayer, I don't think John Mayer has the same influence in blues world that joe bonamassa does no and that, that, that would be my argument there that that right. and and i'll have to back up the rock professor there john mayer is certainly he's a virtuoso um but yeah i agree with you yeah you know, and we we love stevie ray vaughan we've got a lot of programs that we've done here on the channel simon i'm a stevie ray vaughan nut i love him you, you know i was a young guy when he first came yeah. out you know, yeah. but number two, that again, that was a shock. Number two, what do you think he Jimmy? should be? He, well, you see, that that's my point is, you know, why, you know, ahead of Hendrix, uh, do you not think that, uh, well, yes, Booster, I agree with you. I, you know, that that's about history as much as anything else. You know, Steve Vaughan is more recent and, you know, is viewed in a, as I say, in that light of reinvigorating, reinventing renewing the blues and taking it to we've got a stranger in the chat kubrick lover 
<laughs> oh, good really. How are you doing? Good to see you, man. Hope Sorry you're for well. Interrupting you, Simon. No, that's fine. I haven't spotted him sneaking in there. <laughs> no, um, Kubrick Love has been on our channel, folks. Yeah. He's uh, guested with yeah. us. He's hung out with us a couple of times back in the early days. So uh, good to see you, Kubrick. Kubrick Lover makes makes uh, lots of uh, extraordinary kind of soundscape music. It's uh, he's amazing with uh, what he does with the uh, with his guitar. Doesn't play it in the in the accepted sense. He's taking he's really pushing the boundaries of what you can do with a guitar. But, can uh, I can I just jump on what Boomster Black is saying about John Mayer? It wasn't until yeah. John Mayer came out with that album, the John Mayer Trio. And I watched that DVD, Simon, and I think you and I spoke about this because up until then I could I, 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 I could pass him, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but when I saw that John Mayer trio and saw what he was doing and heard him play with Pino Palladino on bass and, oh, Simon, that's just, mm. Wow. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be doing something. I'm still listening. I've still got my headphones in. Carry on. I'm no still problem. talking. I'm just a... Yeah, yeah, you're right, Grand v uh, Great Vanzini, Pino on bass. Yeah. Hey, crappy luxury. Good to see you. But uh, that John Mayer trio, that album. Wow. Yeah. Well, and all wow. his work with the, you know, what's it, the 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 Grateful Dead thing that he does. That wow. is also uh, also uh, also amazing as well, isn't it? As a, you know, but. Uh, yeah, well, I don't. I, mean, I, I agree. I don't think that. I don't think that John Mayer's influence on blues and stuff is 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 as much as uh, as people like Don Amasa. I have to say, you know, as I say, I think that uh, you know that, that that's to me that's what this some of what this list is about. It's about influence. It's about Prince the uh, Black. I've seen. Um, I've got all the. Crossroads DVDs, and I've seen John Mayer's contribution to all of them, so I have to agree mm. with you there too. If you want to go and check out John Mayer's performances, and they're all on YouTube, go and check them out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely, definitely a uh, um, yeah. And, and and you know what he's going to do? He's probably going to do what a lot of guys have done. He's going to get a little bit grayer. He's going to get a little bit older. And he's going to come out and he's going to be doing blues albums, Simon. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? It, it was over here recently, you know, sold out the O2, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Gigs it yeah. <laughs> but, it, but kind of still flies below the radar in a, in a way, you know. Still single, still chasing skirts. <laughs> <laughs> that on the list. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think, as I said, I mean, I think that the, for me, what I like about this it is that it does have more modern plays in it, you know, and they are in yep. the top 10, and that's yep. arguable and good. We can have arguments about it, that's fine. But, you know, I think that, you know, that that it's good that it's not just, you know, Albert Collins, Buddy Guy, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Hanks, whatever you, you know, whatever you're drawing up as a, you know, as a list of people. And uh, whilst those, you know, because those people's influences become second and third hands, don't they? You know, you know, if you're influenced by Joe Bonamassa, you are by implication influenced by you know, Eric Clapton and, you know, and others. And but that's a it's a second hand thing already, isn't it? You know, and with a bit of luck, you go from Joe Bonamassa back and you know and uh, and. And uh, you'd see, you know, him playing with, I don't know, BB King or whoever it is, and uh, uh, Eric Clapton, you know, doing that crossroads from the from the Royal Albert Hall and all those things. And you would, uh, you go back and investigate those things and find them. You know, which must be, which would be a great joy in my books. <laughs> well, guys, if you that. are watching, uh, uh, you know, and and commenting here in the comments, if you get some time later. Go, go back on this video for us and, and key in your top five or your top ten. If you want, it'll be interesting. I'll be, and the Rock Professor and I will jump by and um, yeah. and uh, uh, comment on on your top ten or top five blues guitar players because 
um, no one's going to beat you over the head because you've picked, you know, John Bonamassa at number one. Cra- cra- crappy. I was a little bit like that too. I, I I had no, I had zero interest from John Mayer for a long time until a friend of mine kicked me up the backside and said, you need to check out the John Mayer trio. So I'm going to say to you, Crappy, because you and I are very good friends, have you checked out the John Mayer Trio album? Give that, check that out. Check it out. Yeah, I'll be back in a check sec. it out. No problem. Um, and Kubrick Lover is fantastically correct there. That blues album that came out in 1994-95 that we've ranked here on the channel, Jimi Hendrix's blues album, isn't great, Kubrick. It's it's a masterpiece. It's a collection of Jimmy's blues tunes on an album, um, and it's just, I'm just... Hold on, guys. I'm just going to mute the rock professor. Um, it's worth... It's worth checking out. Definitely a masterpiece. Uh, um, and, and I can understand why some people don't like Joe, um, too. Again, that uh, first album that he came out, I think, in 2010 called Blues Deluxe was the first album of her, of his that I heard. And I thought, wow, this is pretty good. Because, you know, like a lot of older guys, you know, you're, you're on the search for young, hot blues guitar players. You know, you're on the search yeah. for them. You yeah. know, and, and when Joe came up, came on the scene in 2010, you know, 14 years ago, it was like, oh, wow, this guy's great, Simon. Yeah. Um, great Van Zini likes Joe. Oh, oh my, yeah, yeah, I, I, I like him too. Don't get me wrong. Don't you, you know, he's prolific. We'll give him that, Simon. Yeah, I also think that, and you could say that about a lot of people, is he's very consistent as well. Album you know, a year. His, his output, his output, <laughs> he do two albums a year, well, he's more, you know, and, uh, you know, he just, you know, he releases a lot of live stuff, which I think is, is quite an intelligent move. You know, he'll, <laughs> I don't like to. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Boots the black. That's uh, you know, there's nobody said you had to. That's uh, oh look, again, that's Mr. A, Cook. That's a masterpiece Brad. too. Good hey, morning. Hey, How you doing? <laughs> okay, I take back everything I said to you at the beginning of the show. <laughs> take back none of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. But again, yeah, 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 Boomster Black is right. That Ronnie Scott's DVD is that's certainly worth checking out. That's oh, just it's a, wow. it's a it's a it's a masterful display of guitar playing. You know, like no other. Jeff Beck. You know, why is he only number eleven? Oh, yeah, you know, it'd be he, it'd be in my top know, ten. Well, you know, is he better <laughs> than Albert King? Is he, is he more influential than Robert Johnson? Is he? You know, for me, yes. For me, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brad, you're yes, getting get lots that. of love, bro. <clears throat> you're getting lots of love, bro. I better show these messages, otherwise Brad's not going to believe really? it. Look, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Just finished sound check. Just finished sound check. Okay, don't do what the rock professor does after sound checks, please. We want you to be focused on point <laughs> and ahead of the beat, bro. <laughs> Um, yeah here's what crappy's saying oh yeah a body of course buddy your body is a wonderland is crap 100 percent 100 percent and and that's what i based them on for years crappy i did too i thought your body is a wonderland but yeah you please 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 put that aside put that put that away Yes, but it's, but, yeah. well, like anyone, yes, you know, he's just, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the sort of, uh, the pop market is, uh, you know, if you're someone like John Mayer, it's probably a transitory thing. You start off in that way, you have to move somewhere else, really, don't you, as a, as a thing. And, uh, moving over to the more serious side, the, 
the rocks thing blues stuff i think that's yeah probably for long for career longevity that's the thing to do isn't it as a you know as a thing that's what you have to do and we've but, done uh, a lot of videos on the channel too booms the black on jeff beck big part of our channel we did a tribute show simon <laughs> and i and brad we've ranked oh gosh um two or three of his albums on the channel yeah yeah at least yeah i agree ah. i agree uh, yeah 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 come on yeah yeah bro yeah, 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 it's no good for you, Brad. That stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be back here, not the same time because we've got daylight saving uh, has ended. So we're going to be back a little bit earlier, Brad. So don't, oh, bro, while you're here live too, don't forget um, daylight saving. So we'll be a, 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 an hour earlier than what we normally are when you come on and join us next week because we're going to rank one of Clapton's interesting albums from the 1970s, Simon. There's one in every crowd. Yes, indeed. An interesting record. <laughs> yeah, very interesting record. Indeed. So, is that to, is next week when Brad's back is uh, some... <laughs> Eaters, Eaters and, and cocoons. cocoons. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's actually hot dogs and coconuts. <laughs> there's, now there's a combination: hot dogs and coconuts. <laughs> um, we you can play guys, great sets fueled by. We, 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 we're gonna we're gonna leave you soon because I, we've got a couple of things we've got to do. The rock professor's got to shoot off and do some H and C stuff. Um, um <laughs> I, I, I've got to I've got to go and do some bits and pieces too, guys. So um, the rock professor's going to do a shout out soon. But look, um, if if you guys get a chance, please um, give us your top five, top ten. Um, and crappy luxury if you want to check out because uh, i know that you pop on our channel um but yeah if you want to check out mayor's trio um and get back to us and uh see what you think um see, but yeah crappy yeah, yeah. Got oh, mike oh, bloomfield in his top 10. oh is, uh, mike yeah isn't it? 40, so crappy is going he's going eric bb albert peter bloomfield rory Johnson, Freddie, Freddie King. Johnny, and Stevie Ray Vaughan. <coughs> it's pretty good top it's 10. Pretty good, good a top 10 as you could get. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Rory, Rory Gallagher. Gallagher. Sorry, dude. Rory Gallagher's oh. at, uh, at 12. Boomster. Which Another I think genius. Is fair enough. Yeah. Fantastic. Another genius. Yeah. Oh, good guy could play anything. Resonator, mandolin, Simon, acoustic. Mm. But uh, better blues player than Paul Kossoff? <laughs> oh, I don't know. You know, Paul Kossoff, 65. Uh, Rory Gallagher, 12. Is that, uh, you know, I, you know, for me, Kossoff is one of the, one of the you know, Style all of his own, fantastic economic player, fantastic. Be in my top player. fifteen. Yeah, be in my yeah. top fifteen. Yeah. Toss, we, we we love free. You know what he did, what he did with that vibrato and that sustain that he had with that Les Paul Simon and that Marshall. Go and check out those live videos where he's playing at the Isle of Wight, Simon. There's no effects there. There's nothing, no. Simon. It's all in the amps. Bracket Plugged on. in, yeah. Simon. Plug straight in. <laughs> right no in. pedal board. What? No pedal pedal boards. What's that? One such thing as pedal boards in those days. Where's that? Oh, uh, John Zedis says Jimmy Hocking makes my list, but only Aussies know him. I don't know Jimmy Hocking. Do you know Jimmy Hocking? Yeah, yeah. And also he's put some more Aussies. Ian Moss, outstanding guitarist from Cold Chisel, 
boy that uh, Circus Animals album, when it came out, John, I was a young guy, 81, I think that album came out, I was just in high school. Huge album. Stratocaster yeah. player. Molten Gold. Hey, Jonas. Morning, Jonas. How are you doing? <laughs> I'll be good. Good to see you. No, no, sir. <clears throat> <laughs> Bloomster doesn't rate really Joe Bonham as he's not top 50. <laughs> 50 to 100, is he? Bloomster, ah, fair enough. Yeah. Phil Collins. He's, a, he's awesome. not much of a blues fan, Kubrick, I don't think. A scissor. No, Phil Collins, <laughs> outstanding. Um, yeah. Def Leppard. Def Leppard, yeah. Simon, do you want to do a shout out? Can I do it? Is that yeah. okay? Yes, yeah, yeah. So we've got to, we've had good good people in this week. It's been fantastic. Some got great Vanzini, fantastic. Remember to subscribe to Great Vanzini. Let's get him over a thousand subs. Good Phil Byers, nice Phil. Uh, Boomster Black, thanks for all your comments. Bloomster, fantastic. Jazz Thunder Fifty, Jim. Hope you're well, Jim. And thanks for dropping by. Greg Roberts Tune. Um, Arvin, of course. Arvin oh Gort, thanks for dropping by, guys. Brett Zeppelin, Derek Clapton, who's got the man flu. Get well soon, Derek. Mate, I hope you hope you feel better soon. Uh, John ZD351, managed to wake up in the back of the car. And, uh, <laughs> hope you're good, John. Hope you got home all right. Boost to Black, uh, 5150 show. Nice you drop by. <laughs> Kubrick Lover, 1972. Good to see you, Kubrick Lover. I hope you're well. And uh, things are going good for you. Um, crappy Luxury, Greg Roberts Tune. Greg Roberts, nice to see you, Greg, this morning. As ever, supporting us, Mr. Brad Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brad Cook. And, uh, and Jonas Halberg. So hopefully I got everybody. Hopefully I've been missing all that. Great to see you all. And... Uh, Delta Lux pickups, Andrew. What does Delta Lux pickups? Ah, oh, is that a Delta Lux pickup? Yeah. Yep. Ah, good. Good eye, great Vanzini. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> great Vanzini can spot it a mile off. <laughs> Mister Mister Gear review. Um. Thank you, folks, for joining us. It's been great hanging out with The Rock Professor. We look forward to you guys joining us on, on a regular basis. Um, as The Rock Professor said, you know, we've had a good conversation this week. If you want to come on and be a guest with Simon and I and Brad, and uh, that's right, Crappy, a Jim Dandy, great guitar. And you can see here where I've put the Resonator Bridge on. There's a couple of videos on the channel how I've done that and how I've strung that a little bit differently from it goes under the resonator tail as opposed to over so it doesn't put, pop too much tension on the bridge. So go and check that out if you've got a Jim Dandy, great guitar. Um, I play Could it I through say, my pig nose. Nice. Can I say, uh, this is real life in a sentence, isn't it? This is John ZD Thrifon, nearly home, ex-wife's husband is driving, I'm in the back with the kids. Fantastic. Welcome to real life. I think that's a fantastic sentence, John. Could I say? <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely. Lovely. Made me smile. Uh, if you guys want to jump on and uh, guest with us um, on an album, on a on a on a blues album, something like that, get in touch with me or the Simon or Brad. We'd <laughs> love. We'd love to get you guys on. Um, yeah. And work something out. The unfortunate thing is, though, you 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 know the day and the time slot when we go live with this, so you'll have to fit it in. And if you're regular to our chat, well, it's no problem. Um, but yeah, yeah, we 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 don't generally change this show. Um, what time yeah. is it in New Zealand? Uh, at the moment, it's eight twenty p.m. on yeah, a Sunday and I, evening, I'm, and I'm nine twenty a.m. on Sunday morning. In the UK. Where are you? Where you? Where are you? Booms the black. If only if you want to tell us. <laughs> um, 
please join us next week because I promise you next week is going to be a really, really interesting show. It's going, it, 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 it's going to be an interesting show. It's going to be pro- one of the most interesting shows we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I will, Jim. Yeah. I've made a couple just on, on just talking about the bridge. But yeah, I might I might do a review actually, playing, and I might go through doing it through my pig nose. Yeah, good yeah. idea. Yeah. Uh, it's two twenty a.m. here. Two twenty a.m. Where fading. boots are black is yeah. <laughs> and the bottom as a police. <laughs> uh, Booms is in Calgary. He's a Canadian, so he's a brother of. He's a brother of the Commonwealth. Good to see you. Yeah. We out of here? Yeah. I think we should uh, leave these folks to their day and uh, and uh, <laughs> we'll see you next week for uh, for uh, there's one in every crowd. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. What a show. Have a great week, What guys. a show that's going to be. Take it easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care. All out there in the big wide world. Put your yeah, number we'll 10. Your top 10 or your top five, depending yeah. on how much time you've got, attach it, please, to the to the video, and Simon and I will come back. Sayonara. And <laughs> critique it. <laughs> uh, arigato. From our uh, position, supreme executive power. <laughs> oh, oh, um, one thing, two guys, you need to go and check out. I'm going to say arrivederci. Go and check out Ripley. Right. The Ripley uh, series on um, Netflix, uh, the the filming, the the cinematography is just fantastic. It's in black and white. It's based on the talented Mr. Ripley, the film that came out in 1999 with Matt Damon and Jude Law. Go and check it out. It's fantastic. Is our, is our new, uh, this is the name of our band, Sons of the Commonwealth. This is our new band. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, guys, take it easy. Take it away, boss. And we'll see you next week for more of this nonsense. <laughs> group. I didn't Radio vote group. for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Quite right. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Thanks for watching. Take care, all. Uh, See you next week. The video. Where are we? <laughs> we'll play. We'll play this one. Now it's time for Brad's Tech and Tone Tips.